think that we can start this uh, very friendly discussion. I will start sharing my screen. Uh, I hope that I will share the right one. Okay, I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hope that it's okay. It's okay. Grazie Emilia, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I'm Marcello Scarisi, the director of Unimed. And this uh, session today is mostly dedicated to mobility of uh, our students, but not only, also about academics. But uh, looking with particular perspective at the Euro Mediterranean mobility and also open the door to uh, another point which that for us is very important, the South-South mobility scheme. Uh, first of all, some very few words about UNIMED, which is a network of universities and research center. We have at the moment 130 universities from 23 countries and UNIMED was founded in 1991. Next year, we will celebrate 30 years of uh, activity. Uh, our role, of course, is to cooperate, to promote the cooperation among uh, universities in Mediterranean region to, to try to solve some common priorities and in some way also to create a sort of Euro-Mediterranean space for uh, higher, higher, higher education institutions. Um, we have several priority areas that we could be considered important for our uh, daily activity just to mention, for instance, governance, uh, the, the, the social science and humanities dimension, obviously the mobility and intercultural dialogue. Another important task is how to support refugees and migrants. And another issue that I would like to mention is how to support higher education crisis situation. Uh, why is important mobility and what UNIMED does about the mobility and intercultural dialogue? Uh, first of all, uh, before the launch of the Erasmus mm -hmm. Plus program that was in 2014, 2014 until 2020, now is going to the end, we launched in 2011 a petition to invite the European Commission to open the door of the international the, the mobility scheme to southern Mediterranean countries. This was possible thanks to another petition at the parliamentary level in the European Parliament. And in some way, we uh, add our efforts to support this parliamentary petition. Thanks to that work, our petition, the petition of parliamentary and other stakeholders, the European Commission decided to open the door uh, to Southern Mediterranean universities for the mobility scheme. Now we have the same Erasmus scheme also open to other country of the world, not only the Southern Mediterranean region, but uh, it, the most financed region in terms of mobility remain the Mediterranean region. Uh, unfortunately, in our perspective, this it's, it's not enough, and I will explain later the reason why. Then, in addition to that, we decided in 2017 to launch another petition to invite the European Commission to improve this dimension of uh, mobility that is called in the Erasmus Plus program, International Credit Mobility. Uh, and, and now I will explain later about the, this new petition that we are managing. In terms of projects, we have, of course, first of all, some projects of international credit mobility. Uh, we have also some capacity building dedicated to uh, how to improve international relations department to manage mobility, I mean, for the Southern Mediterranean universities. But also we are working with some private foundation that is supporting mobility scheme for Maghreb students. <clears throat> In addition to that, we have uh, two other main important points. We create a democratic sub-network, which is a group of universities interested to cooperate with us. I will give you some detail later. And also some institutional partnership always in the framework to support mobility. Mobility is a key issue for us. Uh, I mean, for, at political level, first of all, we consider the mobility program an important tool to create this Mediterranean generation. This is the new web page, the web page of the new petition that we launched in 2017. We are going now to finalize the work. 
of our petition, the collecting the collection of signatures. We have two levels of signatures, personal, individual one, but also the institutional one. And we are going to deliver by the end of the year the petition to the uh, Commissioner of Education and Youth. Uh, the main goal of our request, of our petition, is strengthening the international credit and mobility, as I said. At the moment, the European Commission finance more or less uh, 10,000 bourses uh, per year, probably less. Now we are asking that they arrive to 30,000 bourses per year. In addition, we are now inviting European Commission to also consider the possibility to open the door to South-South mobility scheme. Uh, in, in, some, in one word, the South-South will, will be explained better from my colleague uh, Nawel uh, Abdelatif. Uh, Mami, uh, the South-South mobility scheme at the moment is very limited, uh, not financed very well, but it's very important to build a regional dimension, a Mediterranean regional dimension. We build Europe in some way through Erasmus program, and we think that it's important to create this regional integration in the South starting from the mobility scheme. And then also we insist that the Euro Mediterranean higher education system has to consider to include more and more refugee students in their own academic path. Uh, our projects, a few words about uh, some of our projects dedicated to uh, mobility. Dear Med is a capacity building project with uh, university from six countries three countries, three Maghreb countries, plus Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, plus France, Spain, and Italy, dedicated how to improve international relations department to manage mobility, but also doing mobility uh, experiences, and also the, the idea to improve the intercultural dialogue among universities, the Como projects, which is a consortium dedicated to manage international credit and mobility, financed from the Italian National Agency. The format project is a project financed by Sardinia Foundation. It's the private initiative that I mentioned before, which is related to support Maghreban students that uh, study, that are enrolling in, in Sardinia universities. And then we created this mobility and intercultural dial subnetwork. In addition, UNIMED is a member of the consortium that is managing this pilot, pilot initiative of the European Commission called Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange, which is a quite innovative initiative that was launched before COVID-19, that now during COVID-19 is showing us the, the, the important relevance of this initiative. Some uh, information about uh, the UNIMED project, I say that is a uh, capacity building project, and I already mentioned the country involved. In the main results, we collected good practice concerning how to manage mobility. Uh, we define an international framework to, for supporting academic mobility in the region. We did mobility, 69 mobility implemented for students academic, and also we implemented the South-South mobility scheme, which is quite interesting, but also the short mobility scheme north to south that north to south that now european commission is thinking to implement in the new program and then we organized two intercultural uh, dialogue events one in tangier physical one and the last and, and another one online that was celebrated last week and this week and we collected very good set of recommendations at the national and regional level at institution and but also at governmental level. I, I, we will publish this recommendation soon in our website and we will invite you to have a look. The, the, the COMO project, some figures here about uh, the, the, the mobility that we are doing, is a very small one, but it's quite interesting because we are not just discussing about international creative mobility, but we are doing it, which is quite important. Uh, I already mentioned the format project, this uh, fantastic initiative. We have realized also a very nice video about these experiences. It is quite important that a private foundation decided to invest in paying scholarship to Maghreban students in Italy in a moment where 
there is a very big uh, political issues discussing about migration in Italy. It's very quite quite challenging and visionary at the same time. I have to say that it was an initiative promoted some years ago by our founder, Professor Franco Rizzi. The, the mobility, the sub-network of mobility and intercultural dialogue is, uh, it seems, another UNIMED because we have 49 universities member of UNIMED that are member of this sub-network from 14 countries. We already did several uh, webinars. We are now planning the next year activity. And I think that is important because it is a, a transversal sub-network that involves the interest of all more or less several members, as I said, but it's uh, something that is important to maintain and to improve, not only to improve the mobility, but also to improve the idea that uh, the intercultural dialogue in a moment like this must be encouraged. Uh, I already mentioned Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange, which is an online community to that discuss um, uh, in debate about common uh, intercultural priorities and uh, to promote the mutual understanding. We have to, to work on our differences. We have, because differences means richness is not obstacles. And I think that virtual exchange for youth is a way to contribute to this Mediterranean generation, able to understand each other and able to, uh, to, to use this difference in a very positive way. I will present later this uh, statement of UNIMED at the end of the, our session, where I explain the reason why we are going to, to promote the mobility scheme. And I stop here for this part of uh, introduction, introductory section to give, I'm sorry if I was a little long, to give now the floor to the next speaker. Today we will have uh, two representatives of the UNIMED project that will explain you more in detail about the South-South Mobility Scheme, the problem that we face it, but also the potentiality that we have in this uh, framework. Uh, then we have also a presentation of regional recommendation about the mobility, as I mentioned during my presentation. And also we will have another experience of another very nice project, uh, which is another capacity building project, Edu Biomed, led by the Autonomous University of Barcelona. Uh, that is in this particular framework dedicated to biosphere, they are also testing a south-south mobility scheme, which is quite, as, as I say, challenging. Now I give the floor to our friend and colleague of CTF2 University and Nawel Abdelatif Mami. Nawel, thanks again for joining us and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, dear Marcello. It is always a pleasure to be part on, on, of the initiatives of the UNIMED and also uh, to work in, in this collaboration. I thank all the uh, persons present here today. Um, thank you for inviting me to this um, event under the Erasmus Days 2020. I will be talking today about the experience of DIRMED. DIRMED is a really good project which has just uh, seen the end, I think, yesterday or the day before. We have been um, living a very good experience of uh, intercultural exchange and also of mobility in four years uh, of the life of the project. I must say that DIRMED is not only a project about mobility, but it has a project which has also given and made all the partners discover the potentialities they have and the abilities they can put in place in their institutions in order to organize very good and successful mobility, either north-south, south-north, or most importantly, south-south. To give you just some hints about the DIRMED project, DIRMED in uh, numbers has organized 69 mobilities in total with 32 student mobilities, 37 staff mobilities, 20 academic staff, and 17 administrative staff. We had among these mobilities, eight mobilities which were organized north-north, 16 mobilities which were organized south-north, and most importantly, 45 mobilities which were organized south-south. 
I must here focus on the 45 South-South mobilities because uh, when you think now that we were able to organize this great number, we should congratulate um, this consortium and we should also congratulate UNIMED for having set this project. Why? Because at the very beginning, when we have discovered the project the first day under the kickoff meeting, I remember very well that all of us Tunisian, Algerian and Moroccan partners were looking at each other and wondering, mobility is south south it was something very strange to us and at least we could see it very difficult we did not have an idea of how to organize the mobility south south although nationally we have some programs some mobility programs in algeria for, for example we have some uh, trainings where we have some collaboration with tunisia and morocco but organizing a mobility per such was something very difficult First of all, because we had some constraints, some financial constraints. You know that the universities in the Maghreb have, they are uh, very much uh, public universities and their finance is related to their ministries. So uh, in doing or in organizing the mobility, we had to face a first question, which is how to manage the money which will be and the grant which will be given to the students or to the staff in general. And the second thing that we were wondering is how to organize the mobility in a sense that what programs should we develop? We had also to think of the different specialties and the students whom we will send because we were different universities. Some of us were specialized in social and human sciences, like the University of City of Two, which had to make exchanges with other universities from Tunisia and Morocco, which were mainly uh, technical universities. And this was, again, another challenge to overlap. And also, we had uh, to um, face another problem of our students. Um, even if we share the same um, culture, the same language, but we had also to um, prevent some uh, cultural shock because this something also happened and I will explain it later. So uh, mainly this was really uh, an issue that we had all to discuss in the consortium. Also, uh, the periods of mobility were discussed and there was a, a variation between the mobilities of the students who had the possibility to go for mobility for two months or one month, um, other mobilities for staff for 15 days for both administrative and academic staff. And here again, we had to negotiate because first, when you send a student for a mobility, we have to recognize the credits that he uh, will have. And here, since it was a one month or a two months mobility, it was difficult to recognize the credits when he comes back. And here again, we had to discuss what kind of students we will send for academic staff as well, leaving them go for 15 days in a semester while they had lectures. We had also to organize this and to manage this with the administration. But in general, um, we had uh, been able to uh, establish uh, some programs. We had organized some summer schools, um, some also um, research, uh, mobility, and some conferences which have been attended. Um, we can distinguish from these mobilities some weaknesses and also some strengths. Well, let's start with the weaknesses to finish with the strengths. As far as the weaknesses of the organization were concerned, we have figured out from the very beginning that the South-South mobilities were not very much appreciated than South-North mobilities. When we have put the call for application for the students in order to join in the DMED project, they were very much interested in the uh, South-North mobility because we had mobilities for the other European partners in, in France and in Spain. But those for um, Tunisia and Morocco, we had difficulty in recruiting them, either for students or for administrative and academic staff. The second uh, um, weakness that we have uh, recognized at the institutional level was um, some difficulties also, or maybe some stereotypes put for some of the countries. 
So when we said, um, let's go for mobility for Morocco, for example, um, some of the students said, but let, I would like to go for Tunisia rather than for Morocco. And, uh, you know, there were some psychological barriers which were very difficult to uh, explain and also the organization of mobility um, because there were some differences between uh, the procedures and the administrative procedures in CITIF2, for example, and in Tunisia. We had, for example, one of our students who had to go for mobility during the month of Ramadan. And generally speaking, when we are in Ramadan uh, in Algeria, uh, the university is for free, so the campus is for free, um, eating and restoration is for free. Whereas when she had to go to Tunisia, she had to pay everything, but not only that, the conditions were different. And we found a very uh, difficult problem with two of our students who went to Tunisia and we had to coordinate with the UNIMED in order to find appropriate measures of settlement for the students. Psychologically speaking, this was a very uh, important issue to take into consideration for the mobility. And then again, one among the very big weaknesses that we may talk about is financing. Um, we did not have the, uh, the uh, measures set in each university in order to be able to send money to our students prior to the time uh, and allow, allowing them to go in uh, very good conditions. And I think that if we would like uh, forward to think of north-south-south mobilities, we have first of all to try to solve some of these issues that are set in the DearMed project in order to create and to develop such mobilities. But there are also some strengths and, and more um, positive strengths in this project. Um, the first thing is that there is a geographic proximity between the different countries. So there is Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco. So it was not like um, uh, going very far from your country, You're not like, for example, traveling to China, to the United States, especially that uh, Algerian uh, students and mainly academic and administrative staff usually had the opportunity to go to um, the other partner countries. It was not uh, uh, something difficult, especially uh, because it was the first experience in uh, first time experience in mobility. It was uh, uh, something very uh, joyful and acceptable. And it has also been uh, facilitated by uh, a common language, a common culture, and they experienced uh, the same um, the, uh, the same aims of study and also uh, the same specialties. They even tried to develop some projects together at the example of the project of City of Two University with uh, the University of Tangier, which was uh, a very successful initiative. There is also the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the fact that there was no problem of visa because uh, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco is a neighboring country where we get access directly without managing to have a visa. But most importantly, uh, it was uh, very successful because there was also a big role of these South-South mobilities in terms of regional integration regional integration at uh, the individual level, but also at the level of higher education. Um, all in all, if we speak about uh, this experience of South-South uh, mobility, I think that DearMed has been the start. DearMed is a, uh, a start of these mobilities. It was a very good uh, experience because it has made each and every country in the South discover its potentialities. Now with the best practices that we have, we know how to manage um, the, the documents, we know how to manage the programs, how to organize the organization and the recognition of credits that we were able to join and to, to, to make it successful by the end. Um, also, uh, there was, after the uh, end of the mobility, there were also uh, many relationships set and built either by the students or by the administrative staff. It was uh, like a very best practice that our students and our administrative staff could witness at open days, even if we did not have the opportunity to do them physically, but we could do them online and they had to witness on that. In general, we can say that Dear Med was a very good lesson, a lesson which has uh, taught everybody that the quality uh, of the exchange 
and the quality of the dialogue of the intercultural dialogue could not be measured through kilometers. It is something that we treasure very much because these mobilities, these South-South mobilities remain undoubtedly a challenge and a challenge that will show the very great potential in each and every country. So all I can say now uh, that DIRMED is uh, uh, at its end, fortunately that we have a sub-network, DIRMED, because we will feel this uh, adventure continuing. It will help us even develop even more mobility south-south with the collaboration of our partners and uh, the adventure continues. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Nawaz. Uh, thank you for joining us and to explain in a very clear way the importance, also the, the obstacles, the problems that we face managing South-South mobility. And as you correctly said, the Universe Sub-Network on Mobility will continue to work on this and will continue to transfer capacity from your university to other universities, hopefully not only in Algeria, but also in the other uh, southern Mediterranean countries because we have to surely benefit about the discussion and as we discovered during the, the our final conference two days ago also we I think that the ministry in itself are interested to develop this uh, framework we know that politicians time by time they talk and they don't act but I hope that we are now in the in a situation that they they probably, they try to do at least what they say. Uh, I remember that they proposed this new program for the South-South mobility. We will see if it works, but we will be there to push, to push them. Now we move to another Mediterranean champion, Antonio Bontempi. He is another Mediterranean champion because Antonio is Italian, but work in a Spanish university and is coordinating a Euro-Mediterranean project dedicated to uh, the biosphere reserve. Uh, the topic of his intervention is thematic mobility in the EduBiomed project, how to build capacity for environmental protection from the academia. Um, just to mention one thing about this project, that it's important to mention that in this project, we don't have only universities. There are also biosphere reserve which is quite important because it's not just a cooperation among academics about environmental issues, but we have the practitioners that manage a fantastic area, which is in the north of Lebanon, is Jabal Musa area, amazing, and other colleagues that work to in, uh, in protected area. And I think that is the, the, the right idea to join the efforts of academia, of, obviously from one side, but also from the other side, from the practitioner, from the people that work directly in the field and surely could suggest us how to improve our work. Antonio, the floor is yours. Well, first of all, thank you for inviting, for inviting me to Unimed, to Marcello, to Emilia. And I hope you hear me. Do you hear me? Yeah, okay. And um, yeah, the, thank you for calling me a champion. I don't feel so, but for sure, my experience and the, the project that, that I'm going to uh, show you and talking about is uh, this, a son of Erasmus, but also because I am a son of Erasmus. I mean, uh, I have been engaged in the Erasmus program uh, two times in two schemes, the uh, usual interchange between the university and those in a joint master program. And me and Roser Manesia, who could not be here today, who is the coordinator of the project, we wrote this project in the spirit of Erasmus and also uh, trying to build bridges, uh, not only from between uh, the countries involved in the project, but also, as uh, Marcello was introducing, between the university and the external world to try to connect academia uh, with uh, the uh, outside environment. I'm going to share with you a little presentation to support uh, my speech. Do you see it? You see it? Yes, yes, it's okay. perfect now. And so Edu Biomed, uh, the title is uh, Capacity Building for Education and Applied Research in Mediterranean UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. I'm going to 
explain you what a biosphere reserve is. But first, I wanted to introduce the framework of the project is a capacity building, uh, which main objective is uh, exactly to build capacity. In this case of Lebanese and Moroccan University in research in teaching about in and with biosphere reserves. Uh, so try to build this bridge between academia and biosphere reserves. Uh, it's lasting three years. We are entering now in the last year of the project. And it counts on nine partners from five different countries. These are the partners we are counting of on uh, uh, six universities, uh, which are in Morocco, the um, Université Kadim Ayad uh, from Marrakesh, the uh, Université Mohamed V uh, from Rabat, the American University of Beirut in Lebanon, the University of St. Joseph in Lebanon, uh, us who are coordinating the project from Barcelona and the Université de Marcel uh, in France. Uh, we are counting also on UNIMED, of course, um, from end of two NGOs that are trying to represent this outside world. From one side, the MAB, uh, France, uh, and the other in Lebanon, in uh, the um, uh, Association for the Protection of Jabal Musa, which is a biosphere reserve. I put here another partner, which is not a full partner, but uh, helped us in writing the proposal. It's a, a center, international center uh, for the Mediterranean Biosphere Reserve, a center that is recognized under the auspices of UNESCO, um, that is based also in Barcelona. And just a brief inter introduction so you to, to locate you in the topic of Biosphere Reserve. Biosphere Reserve, according to UNESCO, are areas comprising terrestrial, marine, and coastal ecosystem. Each reserve promotes solution for the reconciliation of conservation of biodiversity with its sustainable use. So basically are a mosaic of territories comprising um, natural protected areas, but also non-protected natural protected areas that are, let's say, uh, recognized by UNESCO and um, let's see, uh, it's a, it's a um, brand from UNESCO uh, through the Man and Biosphere program uh, that where UNESCO is recognizing the importance of these, of these areas in terms of sustainable development. So um, it, UNESCO is saying, okay, these areas respond to our program of uh, you, um, sustainable development and sustainable development goals. So not only are areas with a very important natural value, but also with a cultural value where economy uh, is uh, uh, respecting the environment, let's say. So they are human and uh, ecological landscape, but also uh, they are made from different geographies. Um, so in the project, we don't have just universities and NGOs and association of university, but also biosphere reserves that um, are, uh, let's say, complex, as you can understand, complex territories and complex objects of study in this sense. And so at the beginning of the project, we recognize this gap between what is happening on the territory and what is happening in academia. Academia has its own drivers, it's and its own uh, dynamics. It's made of professors, researchers, students, and it's building theories uh, on which to work and producing papers and producing academic material that's not uh, all the time correspond to what the territory needs. The territory has its own territorial dynamics, its social ecologies, and it's made of other actor managers that can be public or private, local communities, so civil societies, and so it represented the practice. And we wanted to make this link to build this bridge between the two worlds, the two dimensions, and to put the university at the center of, uh, let's say, a, a, vis a virtuous, not vision, virtuous cycle between biosphere reserve, civil society, and public institution, also to be an engine of transformation of the territory how we wanted to do that, how we are doing that. 
I'm going to provide a very short overview of the activities and then I'm trying to focus more on the mobility part. So first of all, at the beginning of the project, we involved uh, students in the process. Um, we conducted surveys inside the Parton University to understand the knowledge about this concept, about social ecology in general, and to understand also the gap in that sense. So, so to provide the university with an instrument to uh, um, an overview of the, the initial knowledge about the, the topic. Also, we conducted focus group with the, with the civil society organization inside the biosphere reserves and with biosphere reserve managers. So to grasp a little uh, the needs and the demands from the territories in order to then uh, upgrade curricula and also to, um, let's say, plan the future academic activity based on the demands and the needs of, from the territory. Then we also organize some meetings, some workshops, and some training. And here you will see that it starts to, uh, we can start to, to speak about mobility. So Edumeo Med, as a consistent part of the budget of Biomed, is dedicated to promote mobility interchanges and exchanges between actors in the projects from different backgrounds. For example, here you, you see some workshop we organized in Lebanon in the, the Biosphere Reserve of Jabal Musa and Shouf, where Moroccan and all, all the other parts of the project met to uh, discuss about the future activities in this university and to understand how to uh, build capacity in, in this topic. We produce mind maps and so on. And then also, uh, on uh, more a uh, desk work, so not involving in mobility so much. We are also producing, making university to produce some policy reviews in, uh, to review environmental policies that are affecting um, the development of this territory. We are promoting a curriculum upgrading and trying to design uh, um, a um, joint master degree. Uh, on biosphere, Mediterranean Biosphere Reserves. We are also producing an ebook made of publication from uh, interdisciplinary fields. We are also producing some iTools, uh, specifically a database for collaborative research on biosphere reserves and an application uh, for mobile phones uh, to collect citizen science da data uh, from the territory, so to make citizens also protagonists in the research in the academia, and also an online open, massive open online course on Mediterranean biosphere research. And finally, Dulcis in Fundo, uh, we are promoting uh, not only the the south south uh, mobility, so mobility from Morocco and. Uh, to Morocco and from Lebanon and to Lebanon in this case, but also uh, mobility from academia to biosphere reserves and vice versa. Uh, we are we have the pleasure to have here some protagonists of this exchange in the in, a, in this call. I would like them to speak later if they want and to and to uh, explain our their experience to us. Just for, for, to provide with a few examples, it has been difficult to build this, uh, to start this process of mobilizing students and researchers through um, the, the network we, we, are, we are building. And unfortunately, then COVID arrived and it blocked a little of the works. So now we are uh, trying to promote the mobility in South the countries. Um, but we had some experience, for example, here you see a class of, um, from American University of Beirut of uh, architecture students that went to Jabal Musa to uh, design uh, for Jabal Musa some environmental responsible architecture projects. So they did a master class with biosphere research managers. Uh, we had on the right uh, down corner Marie Claire, who went from uh, Beirut to uh, uh, Castanet to Lausanne in France, where MAB France is based, 
to because she wanted to know how to start a biosphere reserve and she wanted to start a biosphere reserve in her in her home country and she went there to understand what's the uh what's the thing and to to then put it into practice and then we had some students from U, uh, university Mohammed Fiver from rabat um, who went uh, for field work in the north of uh, Morocco in the uh, RBIM, uh, Reserve de Biosphere Intercontinental de la Mediterranea, to study different topics from forest fire to gender study to environmental engineer to agricultural studies. And then we had also a big experience with Maya and Kutsaya, and uh, who uh, is also here and uh, she and Kaptar, another uh, student from University St. Joseph of Beirut, went from Beirut to Rabat to study uh, and to uh, for the master thesis on forest fires. Unfortunately, they, they got stuck during COVID, uh, um, during the lockdown, and uh, we had they had to to take a rescue flight, and this. And um, is also a challenge we experience now in the difficulty that this COVID, but we don't want to speak about COVID, right, Marcello, today. So, <laughs> and anyways, yes, this is a modest experience uh, on how to promote this kind of mobilities. And uh, we hope that more people will engage in this last year of the project, but has for Diarmed, also this want to be a, a start of something because it's also difficult for people to connect to each other. And for example, for this last year, we uh, ask, we are asking managers to promote, to provide other topics that can be uh, exploited by universities and that can be based on, that can be constitute the base of uh, the future mobility in the last year of Edu Biomed. Here there are our contacts if you want to contact me or us in the project and thank you. Thank you very much Antonio, uh, very clear presentation, it's not modest, contribution is a, a very important one. I consider this project not only very well uh, designed and very well managed but a very nice experiences and this is also something that was uh, said to me also from my colleagues that attended uh, several of your initiatives. You're right, COVID-19 is affecting, but we will discuss about COVID in another, in another situation, in another form. Uh, now we come back to the Med projects with uh, a presentation made by uh, Claire Jeannet from the University of Paris and Panthéon Sorbonne. Uh, Hi everyone. <laughs> so Claire, Claire will uh, deliver us uh, some tips about the Dear Med regional recommendation on mobility and I think that on this and also on the other uh, speeches uh, I can ask you if you have any questions write on the chat and also you can eventually do your questions directly and of course if some of the students that are attending the session want to say something, yet they are more than welcome. Claire, the floor is your, is your. Thank you, Marcello. I will just add a few more information maybe about the Dermot projects, uh, because maybe we didn't mention that we were a team of a uh, wide variety actually of higher education institution. We were uh, mainly big uh, multidisciplinary universities, but we also had uh, two smaller and more specialized institutions and we still managed to uh, work together and uh, set up mobilities uh, for staff uh, and, uh, and students. Uh, also, so the context was really uh, six countries, uh, Spain, Italy, France, uh, Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia. And uh, um, I would also add that the project was able to include activities at all levels uh, implicated in the mobility questions. So we worked together on how to set up uh, cooperation agreements and how to uh, really uh, start working on the mobility at the institutional level. 
Uh, we also had uh, activities within the project to really experience how the mobility is implemented at the administrative level and share our experience on that. And the project also uh, allowed us to um, see the view of the beneficiaries because we work with students, uh, teachers, administrative staff and uh, share their views on how their mobilities went. And uh, from all this work, uh, we could offer a bunch of uh, recommendations um, at the regional level. Uh, we also uh, offer recommendations at the national level. You, can, uh, you will be able to see all of this on the Diarmid uh, website. Uh, but for now, we'll talk about the regional uh, recommendation uh, that we raised at uh, three levels. Uh, so the first level was the, was the university level. Uh, we thought that uh, it's really important that uh, inter-university cooperation is strengthened. Um, First, um, because it's very important that the universities are actors of raising awareness of the importance and the benefits of the cooperation and the mobility uh, within the area. So it's, uh, it's a role within the universities and a uh, goal to reach to uh, really strengthen the cooperation between uh, institutions. Also, um, the institution should really rely on new technology to uh, make the communication about the interest of uh, this regional mobility uh, more effective. So uh, use of uh, the use of social networks, of course, but also inside uh, researchers, in the field maybe of linguistics and didactics to work on uh, various uh, surveys and projects that will maybe help identify the difficulties of the French students and develop solutions that will be used at the institutional level, uh, but also academic level uh, to answer the needs uh, for um, foreign students. Um, Also, uh, the German projects uh, was very important because uh, from what we learned in the project, uh, I mean, uh, it's important that we will disseminate all um, the results of the project uh, through a new technology and a website and stuff to help raise the awareness of the importance of this mobility. At the institu institutional level, uh, of course, uh, it was pointed out that uh, it's um, the importance of uh, building a framework uh, for those mobilities. Um, so, of course, uh, the creation of budget lines supporting the mobilities, uh, the exchanges and the research. Um, the importance of setting agreements between institutions is also very important so that the framework uh, is really uh, bringing a structure and that uh, the mobilities can uh, rely on uh, this uh, relation, existing relation between the institution. This is something that we really experience in the Diarmid project. If there is an existing relation between the institution, if there is a framework for us, it was the Diarmid project, but uh, we definitely think that uh, there is a need for uh, various institutional uh, framework at the European Union level, but also at the regional level, the national level, to uh, help uh, this uh, mobility and support them. Um, okay. Um, I will not uh, mention everything, but um, also we uh, under the project underlined the importance of participating in uh, the participation in uh, projects such as Diarmid, because for every institution that was uh, partnering the project, uh, Diarmid brought experience on collaboration with the partners, but also 
on our own uh, organization and um, and practices and exchange of practices is uh, is really uh, important and participating in any kind of European regional project shared project uh, with institutions from uh, different countries of the region will make everyone aware of the practices, maybe improve their own practices, but also uh, better understand the practices of uh, their partners and thus uh, facilitate the mobility and, uh, and really help the process. Um, and maybe ease up our own uh, very heavy administrative processes and, and stuff. Uh, also, we discussed the importance of uh, harmonization of the curriculums and uh, bringing more projects of um, uh, joint degrees, uh, especially joint PhDs, uh, but also joint master degrees, uh, as it was also mentioned uh, before. Um, again, I go back to this question of framework, but if there is a framework as a joint degree, uh, the beneficiary, the beneficiaries of uh, the mobility uh, will um, get even more um, from uh, the mobility if there is uh, a strong framework, uh, because it will encourage, uh, for example, uh, credits. Uh, uh, it, at least it will make the process uh, more transparent and. Uh, um, yeah. And eventually, uh, we also raised awareness on uh, the relationship between universities and the socioeconomic uh, level, uh, because it was a statement and um, at the beginning of the project and uh, and maybe one of the things that we uh, we experienced the least within the project, unfortunately, was really the relationship with the socioeconomic level. And we we'll still uh, maintain that uh, this is necessary to improving uh, regional mobility, implicating uh, companies, but also um, civil society uh, and uh, private organization uh, is a necessary step in uh, building a stronger mobility uh, within the region. Um, so basically that's in conclusion, a uh, bunch of examples that I already gave in what I uh, talked about. Uh, so that's all. <laughs> Thank you very much, Claire. Uh, recommendations to write recommendation in a consortium, in a partnership like uh, it was DIRMED is a quite uh, challenging issue and it was a very long process of discussion among the partners to analyze country per country recommendations and then to work on the regional dimension and so on. now uh, is we have to use all this information of this obviously there is a, doc a document that will explain more in detail about each recommendations and uh, we will use it not only to share with our members of UNIMED but also to offer this to European Commission people that is working now to define the new framework program because as you know Erasmus plus program is going to the end at the end of this year and the European Commission is working to prepare the new program and they are in a big delay unfortunately uh, not only for the budget issue which is the first thing obviously because if we don't know the budget available available it's very difficult uh, to to uh, to manage uh, the, the future program and to, to yeah, identify new instruments. But of course, there is also some discussion about the improvement of the program, both for the international credit mobility and both for and also for the capacity building program. Okay, I now open the, the discussion, the debate, some question, or if the students, as Antonio said, they want to say something about briefly about their experiences, there is a questions to the members of the MED from, uh, uh, I don't see very, very well here, this is from Hassan, okay, 
where we can find the results, fundings of the research activities. Well, we don't we didn't do exactly research because capacity building projects are not dedicated to research; are dedicated to transfer capacity from a partner to another. And normally, in my experience, is, is a vice versa process. We transfer and we learn at the same time. Uh, but uh, we have some documents, good practice, that we are already published, if I remember where, in our website. Then the recommendation issues that to show the common work that has been done to work on the mobility uh, scheme made by international relation officers, by delegate of international relation, by people that is experienced in managing uh, mobility and also using the experiences that we did uh, during the project. I don't know if Nawel would like to uh, to add something. I was informed that the, the good practice will be publishing soon and also a recommendation, but we will inform through our newsletter. Please, Nawel. Thank you. Thank you, Marcello. Um, yes, in fact, um, I had two um, questions from uh, both uh, Hassan and uh, Melissa. So um, actually for Hassan, yes, in order to organize the different uh, mobilities, uh, we have signed agreements. This was one of the main conditions to organize the mobilities of the students and the staff as well. Uh, but this was mainly for the project, for the DIRMED project. And now after uh, the end of the project, of course, we kept these relationships and we are going to um, keep on the good practices and the results of the project in order to show also the impact of the project even at the end. So we must now go further by signing other agreements which will include different elements of cooperation. We have started thinking of a very fruitful project with the University of Tanger in Morocco and another one with the University of El Manar. This is always thanks to the partnership of the DIRMED project. We will do that and we will continue showing the impact of the project for the future. And for uh, explaining uh, the question, answering the question of um, of Melissa. Uh, of course, mobilities, when I was speaking about the mobilities south-north, this, this was meant to speak about the mobilities from Algeria, Tunisia and Morocco to the partner countries from the north in Europe, in the northern shore of the Mediterranean, which were mainly France, Italy and Spain. And when I spoke of mobilities south-south, these were the, the mobilities of universities from the same region, the south region, which were Algeria, Tunisia and Morocco. This is, was to answer your questions. Thank you, Marcello. Thank you, Noel. I don't know if there are any other questions, comments, if someone would, would like to uh, participate or to give his or her contribution to the debate. In the meantime, I share again, uh, hopefully the right, uh, sorry. My screen again. To, to a little discuss about this UNIMED statement. Again, let me see if there is any other... Sharing the screen, I don't see if yes. there are any questions in the chat. Please, Emilia, if there are some... Okay, now, yes. Okay, no, no question at the moment. Okay, I will just briefly discuss about this statement. I mentioned you that we already launched this petition with some uh, main topics that I will summarize again in the next uh, slide. Uh, but the main idea is to ask in European Union to increase the mobilities for the Med region. As I mentioned at the beginning, thanks to the Erasmus Plus International Credit Mobility Program, the European Commission invested more or less every year for seven, from seven to 10,000 scholarship per year. South North Mobility, as correctly and very well said now well, more than the North South Mobility, uh, for several reasons, of course, that you can surely uh, clearly understand. Uh, we ask now that the European Commission invest more and more, because if you think that 
um, discussing about 10,000 students, students or staff per year, if you consider that in Cairo University there are a quarter of a million of students, you understand easily that is not enough. Uh, the improvement of the mobility programs of Southern Mediterranean countries will give the students and young people the possibility to, to create, as I said before, this Mediterranean generation. I don't want to say Euro, Mediterranean, I'm used to say Mediterranean generation, because we have to consider all together that this is our region, independently where we are, we are Mediterranean, because Europe and the history, or history of Europe is based on Mediterranean culture. Uh, independent if I'm Finnish or if I am uh, Sicilian as I am. Um, for this reason, we ask, we know how the European Commission work, works. They are there to listen stakeholders, to listen people, to listen the request coming from directly from, from the field. In our case, from students, from professors, from the academics, from the institution in itself. This is the reason why we try to act through these petitions and we invite people to sign as much as possible, more people possible, this petition, not only to just to ask, but to explain that there is a community that is looking to this program and is very interested to benefit of a mobility scheme and to improve the knowledge of our culture through a, a concrete participation in your academic life, in the other academic life, independently if it's not or south. Uh, this is, uh, I stop to share this, to share another issue, which is uh, what I uh, propose in our, uh, in our petition. Let me start with this. Okay, can you share the website now? Yes. Grazie mille. This is the Italian version. We have also an, an Arabic version, just for you to know, if in case. But I come back to the English one because my, I have to learn some English. I'm very familiar with Arabic. <laughs> I prefer to have the English version. I'm joking, obviously. Okay, these are the main points that we would like to underline uh, through uh, the, the petition. First, to have more, more grants. 80,000, 10,000 per year is not enough. We ask at least 30,000 per year. We know that it's impossible, but we have to ask to at least to have something more than 10,000. Um, we know that the European Commission is also now thinking to uh, put in the program the short mobility, which is quite interesting because with a short mobility scheme, you are able to have a look to another academic uh, life, another academic dimension, and then why not to consider to join six months later to, to spend a semester in another, in another country, again, both sides of the region. Uh, then to invite southern mediterranean countries to establish a south south mobility scheme the the competencies is there the the rules more or less are with the erasmus program it they works they work i think that it's not a matter of uh, rules it's just a matter of money which is obviously not an easy task but also the idea to convince Tunisia University is a Lebanese university to work together and not only to look at Europe for their own mobility cooperation. Again, another priority for us is how to include refugees and in uh, students and academics in our, uh, our, uh, our educational institutions. We started to say this at the beginning of the Syrian crisis. After nine years, we are still there. We can't say that is an emergency. Now it's not an urgent issue because after nine years, it's not an emergency issue. It's, it seems something stable. But until now, there is a lack of uh, participation, unfortunately, of refugees to secondary school and to our education. We invite institutions to consider this as a priority. And I want to mention on this, 
another project leaded by our colleague of Cetifte, uh, Nawel, which is the CRS project, which, which is exactly dedicated how to improve the capacity of Algerian university to include refugees and disadvantaged people in their own higher education system. And then to reinforce more and more the capacity building dimension. This is the reason why we launched this petition with these goals. We know that the European Commission, thanks to this initiative, at least open a discussion on this. And I hope that also this time uh, they will consider our request and they will improve uh, the program as much as possible. And unfortunately, we don't know that. I don't know if we have good news before the end of the year. We have to wait probably the first semester of 2021 because there is no agreement on the budget among the European Commission and the European Parliament. I don't know if there are any questions, comment, please. We can invite you to be very friendly, don't worry about to, to say something, to comment or to offer your point of view. There is a uh, question in the chat now. Yeah, again, a question from Christina to Noel and to everyone. Uh, you know, well, you have mentioned a number of barriers that can affect mobility, and we are now also facing hype of edtech and distance education, including virtual blended mobility, sometimes just online and not is not virtual and is not blended. But what do you think about virtual mobility as a tool for internationalization and for in exclusion should be taken into account? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Marcello. Thanks to Christina for the question. In fact, um, also in the Dear Med project, something maybe that um, Claire has already mentioned and Marcello, but we did not focus on it, is that even in the Dear Med project, we have experienced some virtual exchange through uh, the virtual exchange of the students, of the activities of students and uh, they have prepared uh, many uh, sessions under also the Erasmus Plus virtual exchange program. I think that uh, what you think now is really a necessity. We think also uh, that we have included some recommendations about internationalization at home. And this was also something that was mentioned in the Dear Med recommendations and good practices. But absolutely yes, because uh, in uh, in person mobility cannot be afforded for everyone either through the uh, European Commission's budget or even for the national budgets and for internationalizations absolutely there is a necessity to think of this virtual mobility at least to um, uh, to uh, break the barriers and to open this intercultural dialogue first and then as a second step if there are means and we look for the means we can create this face-to-face -face mobility. Absolutely, I do agree with that. Thank you. Thank you, Noel. Thank you, Christina, for your question. And uh, this virtual dimension is, as you correctly said, is important to, to improve the dimension, the importance of mobility, in particular for those that are not uh, able to manage our mobility. And I remember just to mention a cultural issue during the period that you should remember of terrorist attack in Europe and so on. And also this, all this um, very bad news related to relationship with Islam in our society and, and so on. Uh, I remember uh, Lebanese students that said to me, why I have to go to Europe if I have to be discriminated? Uh, this is not something that is related to north, south, why, uh, but it's also south, north. This is something that we have to consider as European in particular. That uh, is not for sure that the students who want to join us if they are not in the right condition to, to have their own experiences and to be respected, of course. And this is something that we have to work and virtual in such situation could be the way to break uh, the world and to understand uh, each other, also to see other, either point of view that if people is not interested to anymore any mobility scheme for those reasons, we are not able to know such such positions and so on. 
Okay, thank you very much. We were planned to, to finish us for 10. Or maybe for... just uh, sorry, Marcello. Just uh, say, uh, verify if the students which are in the chat in the webinar please, would like please. to say something. They can, of course, they are more than welcome. Yeah, it's for free. Don't worry about it. You don't have to pay if, if in case. We have Marie, Claire, Marie Claire and my yes, <laughs> yes, maybe Marie Claire. Marie Claire, please, the floor is Hello, yours. Hello, everybody. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. So I am Marie Claire Andreaus. I last year I was a master's student in environmental sciences and management in Université Saint Joseph de Beirut, uh, Lebanon, and I had the opportunity to benefit from a scholarship uh, funded by Edbriumad. Uh, I was I went to Map France and I wasn't discriminated nor marginalized. No, <laughs> I was uh, very well uh, treated and I felt like home. So I want to thank Adobe for this amazing experience and for taking into consideration all our Lebanese crises and uh, problems and so on. Uh, and I want to thank my friends who, uh, uh, who were a big support for me. So uh, after this uh, uh, mobility to France, I came here and I know a lot about Biosphere Reserve, how it functions, uh, what are the zones of the Biosphere Reserve. So I, uh, I, write, I wrote my uh, end of study project and um, now uh, I, am a, I started uh, two days ago uh, my PhD. So my PhD will be on the uh, heritage of uh, our region in Jazdin and uh, in order to uh, enter this PhD into the biosphere reserve because uh, if uh, we, are, we are preserving our heritage we can put it in the core area of the biosphere reserve and uh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much Marie Claire. Thank you. And uh, you are showing us that work in these environmental issues that sometimes seems minor issues, you can find a fantastic job. And I wish you, I wish you that you will be lucky on this and that you will work for us, for our environment. And, and I hope to, to be able to come back soon. My... Yes, and I would like to, uh, to collaborate with you in, in future projects and uh, everything. With pleasure. With pleasure, with pleasure, <laughs> and uh, you know that is our beloved country, Lebanon, and I hope to come back soon to 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 uh, to see and to our friends. There is another student, Emilia. No, if there is a comment, uh, there is Maya also. Yes, I don't Maya? like Maya. Hello. Uh, uh, it's Maya Tuzaiha. I am from the University of St. Joseph in Beirut, Lebanon. Uh, last uh, winter, in February uh, particularly, I had the pleasure to do my internship thesis in Morocco, um, thanks to a Biomed project, of course. It was a great, uh, very great experience. I had the opportunity to work with the professors from the um, uh, University of Muhammad V in Rabat, uh, also with the students, with the PhD students from the same and the different area of interest. Uh, briefly, my project was about forest fires and uh, the prevention techniques in the intercontinental biosphere reserve uh, of the Mediterranean. Um, also, I had the opportunity to spend time near the forest uh, uh, while interviewing the local um, community and population while testing their knowledge about the biosphere reserves, about forests, uh, the importance of uh, biodiversity in general. Uh, so yani, in order to strengthen the awareness campaigns uh, done uh, to the population, uh, the, 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 yani, the local population in the forest. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Maya, and I think that also to, to, to have these uh, experiences discussing with the local people in another country is quite interesting because exactly in the direction of intercultural dialogue first and because time by time we try to explain that the Arab world is not a monolith, 
uh, a huge difference is like in Europe is the same, exactly the same. But in our perspective, we think that the Arab world is the Arab world and that's it. This is very important to show that through real and concrete experiences that you are doing, for instance, you were obviously learning something and showing us that it's possible to, to, to do something different and to enrich your experiences, your portfolio, also in another Southern Mediterranean country, which is exactly what we are trying to explain. Even Thank I you will, very much. I, I will Please. call it not only a South-South, I will rather call it a East-West. Uh, East-West, also, obviously. East, yeah. East, East, <laughs> West, why not? But uh, that is something that is also another perspective, as you correctly said, another possibility is to say that academia versus uh, uh, civil society or in yeah. some of these Mediterranean protected area and so on. Uh, there are obviously in the chat the possibility to see some link to see the video. Uh, I think that now we are in a little delay about our session. There is another comment from our friend Gianfranco D'Alonso about uh, if a virtual exchange would be the first step to follow migrants in their studies. Virtual exchange is something for everybody, independently by situation that you are facing. Ciao, my son. Uh, independently by the, 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 the activity and the situation where we are uh, based. Uh, is something that could, could give to youth and students. Obviously, we are more focused on students, but generally speaking, virtual exchange was opened also to youth uh, to share different point of view on, on a common issues. Migration was one of the topic several discussed discuss several times, but we were also discussing about uh, think, things related to religion or to food or to cultural issues, independence by, uh, by political dimension and so on. For sure, virtual exchange could be something that we have several potentiality of uh, applications. Okay, thank you very much to all of you. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this very informal and, and very friendly session. Thanks for joining. Thanks to our speakers. Thanks to our students and to, our, and to all the participants. Uh, thank you, Emilia Stoduto, Anne Laurence Pastorini and Federica Rimoni from Unimed team for your help and support and happy Erasmus Day as Christina said. Thanks Christina also for your participation and see you soon in another uh, webinar, Unimed webinar on someone else that I hope soon to see all of you or some of you physically somewhere. Ciao. <laughs>